Hey guys, it's Joe Joe93. So, over on Sunday when I did my DC podcast, I got to finally see Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1. So here's my movie review. So I think the DC animated movie universe has been a pretty mixed bag, similar to the DCEU. But that being said, we have had some great and some awesome film ratios here. Some of my favorites are Batman Under the Red Hood, Soul of the Dragon, and Death of Superman are also great. I really love this movie. And now as for the review for Crisis, part one, I really love this movie because it stands for everything that Marvel should have done with the multiverse. Also, this this is way more for uh, this is way more faithful to the comics than we got in the CW Arrowverse. I also love how front and center my boy G A and Batman and in the Flash are. The comedy is also so good for a DC movie. It's not Marvel comedy that's always in your face. It feels very serious toned, but also funny laughs with the right characters. And the voice cast here is top notch. Um, I enjoy each of the characters and their art and their act their their arcs here. The ending of the movie is jaw-dropping, and I can't wait to dive into this review with you guys. So I can say I highly recommend this movie for you guys. If you guys are DC fans, this is a highly recommended movie. Now, this is a little... If you guys have ever read Crisis, Crisis isn't like, you know, when the comics do, like Adam West does the boom-pow, like, you know, punch, punch, boom. This isn't one of those DC movies where you're getting right to the action. It has to build. Crisis is something, it's not Infinity War where Thanos shows up and then instantly the world is in chaos. Crisis does the true multiverse falling apart. It really shows you the consequences of everything. And honestly, there's moments here in this movie that no disrespect to Infinity War, but there's true moments here where I teared up even more than I teared up in Infinity War and Endgame. Like, you really felt the emotion. There's things, I won't spoil it for you guys, there's things that happen in the end of this movie that set up part two that make you go, Holy shit, that hit me, whew, emotionally. Like, you're just, you're, you're, you're floored. You just can't believe. And then they're like, like, oh, you gotta wait for part two. And you're floored emotionally, and you can't believe it. You can't believe that you're just floored. And one of the things I love about this, one of the things I grew up on with DC is the lore. I love the lore of the DC universe. And this movie, while it does have cool cameos, it's not the Disney version of cameos. You see cool characters show up, and they're utilized. Ted Kord's Blue Beetle appears. Sometimes. Sometimes you get this character. Sometimes you get the Spectre. It all serves a story purpose, though. Like, I was freaking out. I was... It's weird, right? But I know, like, the super deep-cut characters. So I got giddy every time I saw an original character that people don't see very often. And so I really loved this. I really loved how this worked for me. I really thought... Thought it really just worked. Like, something about it just totally fits together. It gels. It jams. Like, also, so in terms of the cast... Meg Donnelly as Supergirl slash Harbinger. They had a Harbinger in the Crisis um, on the Arrowverse, but they turned it into Diggle's wife, Lila. Here, Supergirl, it actually fits. It actually makes sense. You get that cosmic side here. Um, we get the Monitor introduced here, but we don't see the Anti-Monitor, but his presence looms large over the whole product. And I think that's really cool. Like, it really just gels. Also, since we're comparing this to the Arrowverse version... The Amazo, like, android that takes on all the heroes, the way he just smacks up Superman, Flash jumps in, Green Arrow jumps in, the Justice League have their battle. We also even have Lex in his battle suit being voiced by Spock himself, Zachary Quinto, which I thought was really good. And overall, the voice cast is great. I mean, you had Superman... Was it Superman in here? I, I forget if it's Superman or if it's Green Lantern. I believe Green Lantern in here was voiced by Nathan Drake himself, Nolan North, which I thought was really cool. Um, so I really did enjoy the casting. I thought the casting here works. Jensen Eccles, of course, is Batman and proves even more why he deserves to play Batman in the DCU. Um, but I still think there's, that's a video for another day. We still got to talk about candidates for that. Since I did my superhero, Supergirl casting video, which you should be seeing right now, we'll talk about that more later. Um, but I feel that this movie just, it, it gets, it's a part one, but it doesn't, like, unlike Spider-Verse Part 1, the movie's visually stunning. It, it gets you hooked. You're interesting. It takes a little while to get going. But when it gets going, it gets going. The action is spectacular. The animation is properly done. Um, the storytelling is fantastic. The fight scenes with Amazo are great. The fight scenes with Lex Luthor are great. The build-up to some of the other... They show the Injustice League. Some of the Injustice characters are great. Like, seeing Owlman on the other Earths. Just how this... This, this movie... 
takes the crap all over Multiverse of Madness, and I love it. Like, it literally just goes, hey, look, here's a true Illuminati. Here's this. Here's the true, like, Multiverse Expanded. And then when it ends, everything collides and gets you ready for part two in a way that you wouldn't expect. Like, it just really comes together. It gels. You vibe with it. You love it. The soundtrack's great. Like, honestly, I just loved it. Seeing the Justice League, I liked the actress they picked for Wonder Woman. Her accent was great. The way she interacted with Canary and the other characters, just really good. A really good DC movie about the Justice League, about Crisis, a faithful adaptation of Crisis, and I highly recommend it. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10, guys. It looks fantastic. It's a great movie. It gets you hyped for part two. It's the first time I haven't seen a DC movie lead up to the next one in a long time and get me this excited. So, anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on Cri Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths. I really liked it. I can't wait for part two. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Did you like my review? Did you not like my review? Let me know. And let's have a nice, lively discussion about it in the comments below. Have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.